Tonight, the kayak killing case is going a whole lot more interesting if that's even possible. A woman accused of killing her fiance while they were out on the Hudson. Well, their defense is using an unusual strategy. But do the prosecutors really have a strong case here? There's a whole lot of innuendo. But how about the evidence? Our panel of attorneys will discuss and debate. Then FIFA getting kicked with a massive corruption case. The international soccer body is accused of paying millions of dollars in bribes in connection with Qatar getting the 2022 games. The U.S. lost out. And by coming in second place here, could they maybe be reconsidered as the host country. Then the diary of the Aurora movie theater shooter, James Holmes. It has just been released to the court. Some entries, downright crazy. Others make perfect sense. So the question is, will this help or hurt his attorneys who are using the insanity defense? Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. And thanks so much for joining us this Wednesday night. I'm Richard French. Now, first on the docket, a woman charged with murdering her fiance while they were kayaking on the Hudson. Angelica Groswald is now facing second degree murder and manslaughter charges. Prosecutors say that they went kayaking on a frigid Hudson last month and she pulled a plug from his boat so it would swamp. They say she then moved the paddle from him uh, when he was floundering in the water and failed to rescue him. Then. She waited several minutes before she decided to call the police. Her behavior on shore apparently wasn't any better. Investigators say she told them it felt good knowing he was going to die and that she felt trapped in the relationship. She also could get a $250,000 policy in life insurance money, and that's not all. Check out these pictures that she posted on social media soon after her fiancé's death. Not exactly looking too broken up about losing him. Her lawyers say, well, that's all explained because her behavior is simply a cultural misunderstanding because she's from Latvia. She comes from a society where the um, weakness, in, whether it's in the form of sorrow, grief, uh, fear, is frowned upon. Okay, that's one theory. A lot of questions in this uh, case regarding both evidence, defense strategy, and of course behavior um, after her fiance's death. And let's bring in our panel to sort it out. Doug Von Ois, founding partner of Carson Von Ois, focusing on corporate misconduct, selected by the Legal 500 as one of the most influential trial lawyers in the country. Mayo Bartlett, an attorney at the law offices of Mayo Bartlett PLLC and a former chief of the Bias, Bias Crimes Unit. I struggle with that word every week at the Westchester <laughs> County DA's office and Mark Furnish, professor of Brooklyn Law. He's argued all the way up to and in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. All right, guys. Um, first, let's take this from um, the prosecutor side. Uh, and, Doug, they say, hey, you know, let's just go by what she told us. They said she's happy he's gone here. Um, she, they claim she changed her story um, not once but twice. Um, they also claim that um, she chose not to extend an oar to take to help him out, let alone even took one from him. She's claiming otherwise. Sort out for us first. I mean, we've all seen Law and Order. If a police says, "Hey, she told us this," and she's claiming she doesn't, and there's maybe not a videotape confession of it, how does that work? Well, um, she's read certain rights if she's in custody, and then it, once she uh, decides to speak with them they can either, first off, the, the, uh, the police officer could just listen to it, he'd be a witness to it, and then he could testify in court about what she said. Then the next step would be if they put her on paper where she confesses or makes a statement on paper, and then they can actually put her on video also. So these are just different uh, phases that would, you know, firm up what she's actually saying. From what we understand, guys, though, there's not a videotape confession from her, right? This is still, in effect, hearsay. Uh, he said, she said, although we have police involved here, so their version of events would carry more weight than if I was on shore and she said, I'm glad I got rid of the bomb, right? Actually, it probably should not. It should be, it should be equal. And the other thing is that there are a lot of police uh, departments throughout the country that have a practice of videotaping all interrogation. The New York State Bar Association has advocated for that for years. The FBI and is videotaping them all now. It's absolutely. new DOJ policy. And it's similar to the body camera. When you're, when you're videotaping and you show that you have not treated someone in a way that's, that's coercive and you're not mistreating them, 
then it makes it much more powerful than if you don't see what was happening. And you can look at Jeffrey Deskovich again, who who's, uh, yep. uh, happens to be a friend of mine who did 16, 17 years in prison on a murder and a rape that he never committed, which was proven by DNA, and actually the person who perpetrated those crimes ultimately was convicted. So uh, the confession alone is not enough. In fact, your confession is insufficient for you to be convicted. Right. You still need some evidence to corroborate that you did what you claim you did. Okay, so let's go by what allegedly happened um, on the water and on land, okay? And let's first start with allegedly what happened on water. Taking the mitigating circumstances What of, mitigating circumstances? Well, <laughs> 250 grand policy here. You mean here. the fact that she doesn't speak English well? That mitigating circumstance? Oh, I that's can see. We're aggravator. already geared that's up a, air no, up for defense The 250 right is an aggravator. I mean, that would be the motive for doing it. Um, uh, How about the fact that she pulled the plug in the boat allegedly, she um, pulled the oar yeah. from the guy, didn't offer him help when he was dying in frigging waters. When he was swimming around in the 40 degree waters, she, she took the paddle out of his hand and sort of said, come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. I, from my understanding is this cultural defense thing, that's designed to impugn the confession to say she didn't understand the questions, she doesn't speak English well, et cetera, et cetera. Now some of you know my wife, I'm married to a red-headed Moldovan woman, and sometimes I can't communicate with her. But when she says on a daily basis, rightly, I'm going to kill you, that message comes through loud and clear. So I, I don't think that that defense is really going to work there so well. There is no argument, right? Hey, well, she's doing yoga Europe, out there. So. What's the cultural misunderstanding? She's she's frolicking around on the banks on the death scene, it looks like. You're your attorney, and you see her doing yoga poses out there. You're like, would you stop, I assume, right? <laughs> I tell you... Social media and people posting things um, can be more detrimental than anything else because you're going to have a jury that's going to be asked to speculate, and they're going to speculate. And when they see those pictures, it's going to be damaging. Uh, but that does not necessarily mean that she committed the murder. And in fact, uh, if you go to Camus' book, The Stranger, you know, <laughs> oh, right? God. Well, but she can't but understand that book. There's a you're, language you're, barrier. You're convicted based upon how much remorse you show. And in fact, she says that all he these pictures you're seeing are post fact. Yes. Um, Doug, you've been obviously on both sides. As a prosecutor, what's going to help you the most? Because nobody, there was apparently one eyewitness account that we're hearing secondhand that said that she didn't help out and also that she jumped in herself in the water post fact to. Tipped over her own right. kayak. Yes, that she would uh, intentionally uh, be cold in the waters, I think were 46 degrees here, so that she said, oh, I too had hypothermia. But what's going to be. Um, the hardest part of the case to prove and also when you go before a jury what you're going to try and hammer home the most that this was some black widow here that uh, you know had it out for the guy or well the the strongest evidence I think is always the actual statements of the um, of the accused and here she made some statements but you know you have to look at these statements in context you know you hear that statement says that it would be great to see him die. Maybe, you know, they could say to her, have you never thought of that? You never thought, oh, sure, I've thought of that when we were fighting. You really have to look at the statement and the context they put it in because tricks do happen. In, the, in New York State, you can actually trick a defendant into making a statement. But there's going to be people in that jury pool, right, where they're going to say, hey, if it was your loved one, imagine if it was your son that was her fiancé, you'd expect she's going to try... Before you get married, you haven't really fought yet, the thinking goes, right? You'd figure you'd jump in to go save the guy, and you don't want, and now look at her post-fact here. She's celebrating after the fact, you know, like uh, she's on parade. That's got to be playing into the jury's minds, Although right? Although, if, if her intent is to kill him, she could benefit by getting married and killing him afterwards because you may gain more. And the other thing is, uh, every time there's an insurance policy and someone goes missing, they assume that because that policy exists that you must be the, or the beneficiary is the culprit. So anytime you go on a trip, you simply think of people who go to Aruba, you see it every now and then on the news, and they're like, well, they took travel insurance. Lots of people take travel insurance. It doesn't mean that you hope your spouse is going to die. Well, they Those are recently the taken up policy. Yes, the exactly. Yeah. That, that's the well, problem, though. There's two counts in the indictment so far, right? The intentional murder count, which is, deals with pulling out the plug premeditation, that they're going to have a problem proving. Who knows how the, right. the plug got out? But then they added this manslaughter. By the way, it's the only time that literally pulling the plug mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, I, yeah, go ahead. But yeah. then they added the reckless manslaughter count dealing with allegedly moving the oar away from him, moving the paddle away from him, not rescuing him from the frigid waters, not calling for 20 minutes while he's flailing around there. That's going to be a problem the, for her. The independent witness is going to be tremendous in this case. So that person's detail or lack thereof is going to really be what's, what's telling. And if they really don't contribute 
very much. It's a reasonably triable case. Sure. They're going to have some issues in terms of the social media, but that can be explained, and you're going to look at the totality of the circumstances, how long was she in custody. How in can it custody. be explained that she's doing gymnastics next to the... She's next and, the and there's other photos, she's too, no, by the way. We're not even doing right the whole the social media profile. And, yeah. and finally, guys, you got to figure, if she had no discretion or judgment, and she's doing this... <laughs> She probably ran her mouth to somebody, right? So you're going to probably think uh, that her conversations post, uh, you know. Look at, uh, she's hanging 10 in that photo. Did you see that? She's a kooky. Yeah, I'd say a lot <laughs> kooky, but okay. Um, all Do right, you guys. think she's a mail order broad? Do you think uh, that? I, I'm not going there. I don't know. She's I don't 35. know. She's no facts and evidence here. Very possible. Do you think though. she's an American citizen? I don't know. Um, when we come back, though, I'm going to. Uh, Head over to the pitch, if you will. We will leave FIFA. Um, you got to leave it to them to actually make the NFL look good. Roger Goodell is probably saying, keep the story going. Justice Department. And that's one of the interesting parts here. The U.S. Justice Department charging officials at the International Soccer Group with bribery, corruption, and racketeering. The group headquartered in Switzerland, and the games played internationally. So, again, why is it that the U.S. is prosecuting the case and could maybe just maybe those 22, 20, 22 games be not happening in the Middle East, but happen on American soil. We'll talk about all that after this.